so when the undergraduate podiatrist took his final exam, he said, feet, don't fail me now. <laughs> yeah. Folks, believe you me, you won't fail if you let mathematics be your guide. I'm serious now. Let's see how the phone calls are coming. Here we have Arthur. Arthur. Arthur Happy Man Howard. He's got a light now. Thanks, Arthur, for that pleasure. You're doing a great job. Hey, how you doing there? How's Smokey? All right. Hey, we got Broadway Beverly Mickens. How are you doing today? Mary, I love your tuck. Oh, is it rented? Yes, it is, and it's deductible. So thank you very much. Keep those calls. Bad. Number one, Reggie Kathy, helping us out. Thank you, folks. Listen, pledge your support through the one, the only Square One TV. Help us out here, Louisa Lashin. How are you? Very good. Hey, yeah. it's Hollywood. They're calling for me. No personal calls. No, it's okay. She's always working. I love her. Thanks for helping us out. Oh, hey, what you doing there? I'm knitting you a sweater, Larry. Knitting me a sweater. Chris Space Cadet Franco. Thanks for the help, Chris. Keep up the good work. Oh, <laughs> Cynthia Dame Darlow. How are you? Oh, thanks. It's a very generous pledge. You see, working hard as always, and a personal friend of Queen Elizabeth. So, folks, keep those pledges coming. We want more questions, answers, and hints from you about mathematics. Let's see how you're doing as you pledge to our square one cast. Cynthia. I don't know. What is guaranteed to make you laugh for five cents? I'll bite. A nickel tickle. I don't know. What does your arithmetic homework get when you leave it in your pocket and it goes through the laundry? A math bath. Oh, I don't know. What, what do you call... Two and a half dozen kids who've been camping for a week and haven't had a shower or a bath? Dirty 30. <laughs> oh. Well, I don't know. What do you call a half a hundred people who try to make an entire meal out of one chicken? Thrifty 50? I don't know. When do elephants have eight feet? When there are two of them. I don't know. What can you get from studying too much? A brain strain. Okay, wait, 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 wait. Okay, okay, we got one, we got one, all right? Listen to this. What do you call a person with a really sharp head <laughs> who keeps trying to burst balloons at a kid's birthday party? You don't know? A real... <laughs> Pinhead. That was a good one. <laughs> we now return you to the secret number quiz show, What's My Number? Already in progress. Well, it's hard to believe, panelists, but you missed another secret number. Oh. Getting a bit disappointed here. I think we can do better than that, don't you? Oh. We'll try. All right, let's try this <laughs> secret number. Take a look at your monitors, please. As you may remember, your grids are numbered 0 to 99. And this secret number is in this section. For you smart guys at home, here's another hint. The secret number is one of these. Try and figure it out. To begin questioning, a man who once said, Funny guys finish first, Alan Stevens. And to finish guys funny last. <laughs> I'll bet you have a question. <laughs> if I were a betting man, I'd bet you were right. <laughs> Oh, let me see here. Um, is the sum of the digits odd? Is the sum of the digits odd? Checking your number grids? Yes, the sum of the digits is odd. Uh, that's odd. <laughs> <laughs> You'll notice we've eliminated about half of the numbers with that question. Excellent question. And we've also left a rather interesting pattern there. All right. Dorothy Kilbasso, well-known person. He meant well-worn person. <laughs> Just kidding, Dorothy. Today is trash day, Stevens. Be sure to order enough for the weekend. <laughs> I did that joke back in 1939. <laughs> and today you are that joke. Ouch. <laughs> Sean, if you rounded the secret number to the nearest ten, would you get a bigger number? Now, how do you want to round the numbers ending in five? Round them up. Round them up. Good thoughty question. And the answer is, checking our number grids... No, you would not get a bigger number if you rounded to the nearest ten. Kitty Hardworm, a question, please. Thank you, John. Kissy, kissy, kissy. <laughs> Is the number a multiple of nine? Is it a multiple of nine? Checking your number grids. Yes, it is a multiple of nine, leaving you with two numbers. Good question, Alan Stevens. <clears throat> then let me say this about that. Is it also a multiple of six? 
Is it a multiple of six? No, it is not a multiple of six. All numbers have been eliminated, but the secret number, which is 63. Oh, finally got one right. Congratulations. Join us again next time on What's My Number? If Square One TV represents 100% and this much of the show is over, how much is left? Think about it. Hello, Bureau of Missing Numbers, Terry Ryan speaking. A number's missing? Which one is it, sir? Number nine, all right. Now, can you tell me a little bit about it? You know, any uh, unusual characteristics, any bad habits, anything at all? All right, is it a prime number? Let's see. No, it definitely is not a prime number. It is, however, a multiple of three. Oh, hold the phone a second. Something just occurred to me. Nine is also a square number. What's that? Well, of course my lips are sealed. What? Nine is an odd number. No kidding. It certainly is. You know, all this information is very, very useful. Now, can you think of anything else at all? Anything? Wow, really? No kidding. Let's see. You're absolutely right. Nine is one more than a multiple of four. That's right. Eight plus one is nine. Rest assured, sir, I'll bring back that little number nine or my name isn't... Hello? Hello? Emotions. Terry Ryan was off in search of the missing number nine, a search that could put her life in jeopardy. In a moment, the results of that search. The missing number nine was found, standing on its head, insisting it was a six. It was returned to its rightful place in society between the eight and the ten. And so Terry Ryan's stamp closed on another missing number file. Thank y'all, thank you. Well, I'd like to welcome you here to Tillis tonight, and we hope you're having a real good time. For our next little thing we're going to do for you, it's a little number that was a real big hit for us. It's called Nine, and well, we hope you like it. Five, six, seven, eight. Nine, nine, nine. Fantastic number nine. It's perfectly consistent. It works out every time. Nine, nine, nine. That crazy number nine Times any number you can find It all comes back to nine Two times nine is eighteen Eight and one is nine Three times nine is twenty-seven Seventy-two is nine Four times nine is thirty-six Six and three is nine Five times nine is forty-five Five and four is nine Six times nine is fifty-four Five and four is nine Seven times nine is sixty-three. Six and three is nine. Eight times nine is seventy-two. Seven and two is nine. Nine times nine is eighty-one. Eight and one is nine. Nine, nine, nine. Fantastic number nine. It's perfectly consistent. It works out every time. Nine, nine, nine. That crazy number nine. Times any number you can find, it all comes back to nine. Nine times ten is ninety, just drop the zero sign. Nine times eleven is ninety-nine, makes me rhyme with another line. Then nine and nine is eighteen, and eight and one is nine. Times any number you can find, it all comes back to nine. Is this one of the bigger numbers, King? Yep. Let's try this. 3,487. Mm, 9 times 3,487 is 31,383. 3 plus 1 plus 3 plus 8 plus 3 is 18. 1 plus 8 is 9. It always works. 9, 9, 9. Fantastic number 9. It's perfectly consistent and it works out every time. 9, 9, 9. That crazy number 9. Times any number you can find, it all comes back to nine. It all comes back to nine. It all comes back to nine. <laughs> <laughs> Western and boy, have we got some beautiful country 
playing Western music hits for y'all today. Oh, yeah, we sure do. Like this little ditty. On Saturday nights, I like some action, so I go downtown and reduce the fraction. And who can forget the old time favorite? You make me feel like a jerky nerd when you showed me one half is larger than one third. Oh, yeah. And this is a personal favorite of mine. It's sung by our very good friend, Waylon Jennings Bryan. I asked her if she loved me, and her mouth began to laugh. So I told her that one seventh was much smaller than one half. I can take it from here, country. How about unlike many things in this whole world that require a bit of rigor when your denominator starts to shrink your fractions will get bigger or this old chestnut eight sixteenths of his love he pledged to me but i just laughed although it sounded like a lot it's really just one half that's pretty country that's pretty and how about my love for you is pure though blind it's not unlike the mold i pledge for force of that love it's another word for mold and of course if you love me, don't forget me, or else you'll break my heart. And don't forget if you got one fourth and one third, one third's the larger part. Last but not least, the denominator of a fraction is that number down below. I hope y'all understand this, because now I gotta go. So remember, folks, send for your records and tapes now to Country and Western Music Duo, C and W Fractions, one third, Numerator Road, Half Mast, Arkansas. Goodbye. Goodbye. And a happy, happy snail. snail. Uh, snail. Tr uh, a gale. snail. 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 Yeah. <laughs> The story you are about to see is a fib, but it's short. The names are made up, but the problems are real. It was Tuesday, 9.42 a.m. An alternate side of the street parking had been suspended due to one of the most joyous holidays celebrated in the Big Apple, Gypsy Cab New Year. I was working the day watch out of MathNet. My partner is George Frankly. The captain is Joe Greco. My name is Monday. I'm a mathematician. We were getting involved in a strange crime wave, strange even for New York. We decided to look at scenes from yesterday's episode to get our thinkers thinking. Plenty of unusual things are stolen by robbers, but when Captain Greco told us what was missing this time, we were astounded. Parking meters. Parking meters? That's right, parking meters. What would anybody want with a bunch of parking meters? The money, the money inside. inside. Oh, of course, the money inside. We wondered, if someone was going to steal a parking meter, how would he do it? I thought I heard the sound of a chainsaw cutting down a parking meter. Didn't think much of it. You didn't think it the man told us he saw someone cut down the parking meter, throw it in the back of a pickup truck, and drive off. It still didn't make sense. How much money could a parking meter hold that would be worth the risk? Boy, New York City really collects a lot of money on parked cars. More than $34 million each year, plus parking tickets for people who park at expired meters. Perhaps a criminal could make a living swiping parking meters. We looked for patterns and thought we had found one. And we may have an alternating pattern going up and down the east side. Look. We figured we knew where the next parking meter massacre might take place. With our undercover NYPD friend, Benny Pill, we staked out the area. The wrong area. Go to Madison Avenue and 64th Street. What's up? It's what's down. More parking meters. And so it goes. Morning, George. Any news on our pattern? Morning, Kate. Top of the morning to you. I have a call into DOT. Want to see my new watch? You got a watch? Yeah. Want to see it? Sure. No fooling. It's a dandy. It sure is. 24 carats solid gold and silver. It's a Rolex. Where'd you buy it? Tiffany's? No. I bought it from a guy in the street. He had a whole bunch of them. How much you pay for it? That's the beauty part. Three dollars. I don't know how he does it. Mathnet Monday. Just a moment. It's for you, Mr. Shopper. Someone in research at DOT. Mathnet, frankly. Uh-huh. Really? Could you get that report over to us, Sergeant York? Thanks. Got the time, Kate? 9.57.
Thanks. That was traffic, and they had some info about collections. You know, Kate, when they empty the parking meters? They don't collect every day? Nope. The reason our first pattern didn't work was because 64th and Madison is not in zone 112. But maybe we've got another. The massacres all had at least one thing in common. The meters were chopped down the day before they were to be emptied. So? So they would be at their fullest. You know, they would be as full as they're going to get. The chainsaw ripper is catching them when they have the most money in them. And he's done it six times. Unlikely to be by chance. Right. He had to know these meters were ripe for the plucking. Who has a copy of the collection schedule? He said there were 86 people in the division. Then it must be an inside job. You think one of the collectors has turned to a life of crime? Nobody else has access to the schedule, right? Right. I'll ask Sergeant York to run a background check on the collectors. Good. And I'll find out when tomorrow's collections are to be made. Right here, Kate. Four different zones. While George checked with Sergeant York, I checked with the captain who gave me the go-ahead to alert the patrols in the four zones. Mathematics was about to pay off again, and we figured by tomorrow morning, we'd have our crook. It looked like this pattern couldn't be beat. Sergeant York said he'd get back to us fast. I guess there's not much else for us to do, but... Answer the phone. Math, and frankly... Oh, yeah, I was just thinking about... What? They did what? When? Okay, Kate and I will be right over. George, what's wrong? That was my wife. Martha? Yes, we've been robbed. Robbed? Yes, while Martha was out of the apartment, somebody broke in and stole the TV, the CD, the FM, the AM, and the RV. RV? They stole a recreational vehicle? No, RV. Rented Victrola. And not only our apartment, four others on the floor. I'm hopping mad. Let's go see what we can see. Right on. You have a lovely apartment, George. Huh. You should have seen it before it was robbed. I'll be needing you to sign this report, Mr. Frankly. Your wife said she thinks this list covers the stolen items. Where is Martha? She is at a Save the Penguin meeting at the Museum of Natural History. She will not let a little robbery ruin her commitments. Take a look, will you? Who are you, sister? I might ask you the same thing, brother. Mike Malice, New York Past. A newspaper reporter. In the flesh. The New York Past. Strange name for a paper. We're uh, usually late with the news. Any idea who might have committed this robbery? Thieves? Hey! Something else missing? A simulated Naugahyde purse filled with coins. Valuable coins? Of course they're valuable. I'll add to the list. Well, I think I got my lead, so uh, I'm out of here. That's a closet. What are the chances of getting that stuff back? Uh, not good, I'm afraid. The thieves take appliances like these because they're easy to sell. Where? Sometimes they fence them through pawn shops. Sometimes they sell them out of a truck on the street. Did they take the same kinds of items from the other apartments? Uh, that they did, Ms. Mundy. Took them down the service elevator and put them in a blue van. The doorman saw them do it, but he thought they were from an appliance repair firm specializing in emergencies. Why on earth? Did he jump to an idiotic conclusion like that? Because the sign on the side of the truck said, Major and Minor Appliance Emergency Service. Oh. He didn't get the license number. But he did notice they were Jersey plates. There can't be more than 10 trillion vans in this city with Jersey plates. Sign this, pal. Where do I sign? I've got to note the time. 9.57. You sure? Sure, I'm sure. It's a new watch. We'll be in touch, Mr. Frankly. Sorry, Parg. 
We'll get them next time. Wednesday, 7.45 a.m., and we were in the office early in hopes of catching our chainsaw maverick. Hi, Kate. See the paper this morning? Afraid not. Anything good? I made the headlines. Look, cops coins copped in co-op coup. That's New York Past journalism for you. What's the story say? Just that I lost a bunch of coins that may be worth millions of dollars. Well, you said they were valuable. To me, they were valuable. It was my laundry money. George, is your shirt wet? Damn. Didn't have enough quarters for the dryer last night. I know how you feel. I spoke to Sergeant York, Kate. He checked on the collectors and says they are all above reproach. They have excellent records. Just what we need. Another dead end. We've got to keep thinking. I know. Problem solving gets discouraging sometimes. Hey, I'm the one who lost millions of dollars worth of valuable coins. Good morning, my netters. Any news, Captain? Yes, but all bad, I'm afraid. Somebody knocked over 300 meters last night in two zones. Were they all ripe? Uh-huh. Scheduled for collection today. And New York's finest didn't see them? I told you I've only got a few men. Those are big zones, and I can't cover them adequately. You knew it was a chancy assignment, Kate. I know, Captain. Whoever's doing this has got to have a schedule of collections. The collectors meet every morning at Central Dispatch. That's when they get their territorial assignments. You mean the collectors don't know their assignment until the morning they show up for work? That's right. Who makes the schedule? The dispatcher makes it up, copies it, and distributes it the next morning. Then the dispatcher must be our man. He's the only person who knows which meters are to be emptied. That dispatcher is Edwin Moose. He's been on the job for years. I believe him to be as honest as a day is long. Then we shouldn't put a tail on him? Follow his every step. We had a few leads to check out and asked our pal Benny, an undercover cop, to follow Edwin Moose. We wanted to report on his activities. We asked Benny to notify us if Moose got within a mile of a chainsaw. He said he would. Matt, Monday. Who? Yes, yeah, send him in. Got something, Kate? Walter Premium to see you. Oh, right. He's with Mutually Yours, my insurance company. Wants to talk about the robbery. I sure do. I love to talk about robberies. Don't like committing them, you understand? Just talking about them. <laughs> I'm the victim, Mr. Premium. So nice to meet you, Mr. Frankly. And may I tell you, frankly, why you're not covered for this prank? Not covered? I've been paying all that money for premiums all these years, and I'm not insured for loss due to theft? Let me begin at the beginning. Are you sure these items were stolen? Of course I'm sure they were stolen. All right. For the time being, I'll take your word for that. Thank you. Now, when I said you weren't covered, I meant you weren't fully covered. You see, a lot of this junk was old. Junk? Those appliances were all just fine. Oh. When did you buy your TV set, for example? Five years ago. Now, that's old. It worked perfectly. Now, how do I know that? Did you ever invite me over for dinner in an evening of television viewing? No. For all I know, he's just sitting in the corner holding up a ficus tree. So? So, we'll have to depreciate it. What does that mean? It means, as things get older, their value lessens. Now, at Mutually Yours, we have computed the depreciation of certain items. Now, our report says that your TV set was worth $500 when you bought it. That's right. Well, Mutually Yours feels that your TV set loses 20% of its original value each year. And that's generous. Have you seen the programming lately? <laughs> now, after one year, your $500 set is worth 20% less. 20% of 500 is 100. Now, we subtract that figure from the original cost, and after one year, your TV set is worth... $400. Say, that's right. Have you ever been in sales? Go on. <clears throat> After two years, we depreciate another $100. Then your TV set is worth $300. So, as you can plainly see, after five years, your TV set is worth absolutely nothing, and I am authorized to give you a check in that amount. 
What about my compact disc player? That was only two years old. CD players depreciate much faster. Why? I just don't like the sound. Oh, I do. Oh, no, no, no. We think the CD business is going right down the chute. Digital tape is on its way. Now, we depreciate CD players at 50% per annum. I paid $300 for mine. 50% of $300 is $150. So, after one year, your CD player is worth half its original value, and after two years, zilch. Are you telling me you're not going to give me anything to cover my losses? Of course not. Here is a check for $7.43. What's this for? Your AM radio. What about my coins? Oh, no. Your policy does not cover cash. Now, if those coins were old and collectible, many coins increase in value as they get older. We would have covered those, but you said they were just worth face value. That's right. Uh, pity. Well, ta-ta. I must fly. Say, uh, while I'm in the neighborhood, I wonder if I may make so bold as to ask if you'd like a $100,000 whole life. Goodbye, Mr. Premium. Perhaps some other time. George, this just isn't your week. Math, Ned, frankly. Who? Why? When? Where? We'll be right there. Partner, maybe my luck is changing. That was a man named Modoc, Blonde's Modoc, and he just saw something interesting. Which was? He saw the major and minor emergency service van, and more importantly, he has a description of the driver. One hundred percent Square One TV is a production of the Children's Television Workshop. For a complete set of Square One TV teacher resources, send a check for $9.95 to CTW School Services, Box SQTV, 1 Lincoln Plaza, New York, New York, 10023. This program was made possible.